Okay, so this is my analysis of uh, SSP, otherwise known as uh, Space Solar Power. It's something that's been getting a lot of media and internet attention lately. Uh, there was a link to it on, uh, I think, uh, change.gov, a, a white paper, which I've included in the sidebar uh, for anyone who's interested. This is all pretty self-explanatory. I'm really just kind of amazed. I mean, this is just another one of those examples of how social psychosis kind of takes over and self-perpetuates. Um, this is probably going to be a long video because I have quite an analysis here, so I'm just going to start reading and try to get it done as quickly as possible. The key economic factor in any space venture is weight. At uh, 30,000 to 15,000 a pound, and that's how much it costs basically to send a pound up into space, there's just no way that SSP can ever compete with uh, low-tech terrestrial-based solar power, which is constantly advancing in efficiency and decreasing in price. As long as spacecraft continue to use engines based on conventional physics, the cost of sending a payload into space will remain relatively the same. Ironically, the propulsion problem is also an energy problem, so if we were capable of making an engine that could produce so much energy cheaply, it would be far more economical to use that technology to generate power here on Earth rather than send cargo into space. The biggest weakness in SSP architecture is the necessity of shielding, i.e. protection against micrometeors and other space debris. Solar power equals surface area, surface area equals shielding, shielding equals density, density equals weight, weight equals cost. Pretty simple um, formula there. Similarly, high tech equals high cost. While the true value of solar power is that it is inherently low-tech and therefore low-cost, the white paper fails to produce any truly speculative advantages, the kind that you would expect given the extremely speculative nature of the concept. One thing I've mentioned before in other um, editorials, extremely low temperatures are, allow for use of superconductors, but only from the point of the solar array to the Earth's upper atmosphere in this instance. So the value there is mostly negated. Not that they even bothered to mention this as a possibility. <coughs> as for incentives, they use the preposterous circular argument that the best justification for SSP is to achieve cheap and reliable access to space. The rest of the proposed advantages are far more absurd. However, none of that matters because the annual global terrestrial solar fall is 800 terawatts. With our current total consumption being only 15 terawatts, a factor of 53, it's quite clear that space-based solar power is nothing more than another lame ploy by the aerospace industry to appear relevant in a post-space age world. What exactly makes space so special? Aside from Earth-orbiting satellites, I challenge anyone to name a single ubiquitous resource or product that is the direct result of our or anyone else's space program. Furthermore, I'd even be satisfied with a short list of future benefits, assuming that we continued sending people and equipment into space for the next 100 years. Although it's quite popular to refer any time period post-1957 as the Space Age, Aside from lots of pretty pictures, we have yet to see any concrete benefits from our astronomically expensive exploration attempts. Don't get me wrong, <clears throat> I'm not against real space exploration. What I am against is our preemptive Stone Age version. It doesn't take a genius to see that rocket-propelled spacecraft are far too primitive and impractical for reliable intergalactic travel, even within our own solar system. This is money that would be far better spent on physics research. Realistically, there should be a moratorium on space exploration until two key technologies have been realized. One, faster than light locomotion. And two, maintenance-free shielding that can withstand the extreme conditions of space. So that's pretty much my analysis. Um, 
I'm guessing I'm probably not going to get a lot of comments on this one just because of how ridiculously technical it is. <clears throat> so, um, whatever. Thanks for watching.